Hey guys, Retro Gaming Guy here. So I recently stumbled across this product right here on Amazon. I'm a huge arcade fan. So I wanted to test this product out, even though it is Pandora Box. I'm not a huge fan of Pandora Box just because of how they lay out their setups, but this does look like it is a pretty cool setup right here. So we're going to unbox this. We're gonna set it up. We're gonna test it out, see what the experience is like on here and see if it does actually have 26,800 plug and play games. Let's dive into it and get started. All right, guys, here we have our Pandora Box arcade console with 26,800 games built into this. So our control panel right here has player one and player two, but we have two USB ports on the back side here that we can use to bring in additional controllers. So if you have games that you wanna play that allow up to four players, you could play two right here on the control deck and then two additionally over here through that USB connection. So you could bring in USB wireless controllers or USB wired controllers, whatever you wanna do there, it is possible via those USB ports. We also have our master power switch right here. So you flip that to power everything on. We have our DC power supply cable connection right here. Next to that is our HDMI cable. That's what I'm currently using. So with the HDMI cable, you can get your audio coming through your TV. We also have the ability to use VGA right here. Now VGA is only going to bring your video through, not your audio. So if you use that with like an older monitor, you would actually use this little volume control to get the volume and the audio coming out right from the control deck. We also have our TF slot right here with our micro SD card. That's where all of our games are. And then, as I mentioned before, our two USB ports right there. We also have a settings button so we can jump into settings by simply hitting that switch. So I'm gonna jump into this with you guys and we're gonna tour through exactly what this has to offer. So right up here on our master list, if we actually go upwards with navigating, we should get our final count, which is again, 26,800, which is exactly what's advertised. Now, if we go through this list, you're gonna notice here that everything is laid out at random. So there's no alphabetical order to this whatsoever, which kind of sucks in all honesty, because it's very hard to navigate and hard to look for what you're you know, in, in search of here. So right now the King of Fighters populates in all over the place. There's different versions of the game, obviously, but you know that starts with T. T should be at the bottom of our list, not at the top. So very hard to actually navigate. Now, let me see if we can actually search on here. So if we hit our uh, one player button, we can actually go in here and we can actually go through this a couple different ways. So we can search on here. And if we select that option, we can go over here and let's say we're looking for, um, let's look for anything. Uh, you know what, let's go into WWF because I'm a huge old school wrestling fan. So let's just type in WWF and see if anything comes in. So there we go, we've got a few titles here, but you'll notice right off the bat, we do have duplicates. We have WWF Superstars, we have WWF WrestleFest, WWF WrestleMania, and then we kind of pretty much start that list all over again. So let's see exactly, let me just confirm this with okay, and we'll navigate this list. So I do like that we have the video previews there on the right hand side, but take a look at our list here. We have Superstars, WrestleFest, WrestleMania, Superstars, WrestleFest, WrestleMania, and then we drop down to Raw, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania again, Royal Rumble. So there's a lot of duplicates on here. And as we scroll through here, you'll see how many times over everything is in here. I mean, some of these are different titles, but we've got WrestleFest in there a whole heck of a lot. I mean, you can see as we scroll up, we're seeing WrestleFest time and time again. So let's just, just for fun here, let's count how many WrestleFests. We got one WrestleFest, two WrestleFest. Um, three, got four right there, five, is that six at the bottom? Yep, six at the bottom. Uh, 
All right, so six different WrestleFests on here. And we can see Superstars is in here multiple times. WrestleMania is in here multiple times. So that's going to give us a clear indication that there's a lot of duplicates on here. So sure, there's 26,800 titles on here. But if six of them right there are the same title, we can see the same things going on with all the other games on here as well. You can see how that would add to that massive number very quickly. It doesn't mean that that's truly our game count. It means that they're padding the numbers considerably when there's multiples of each in every game. And you know, here as our example, just in the wrestling games, there are multiples of every single game in here. Um, so you know, the numbers shouldn't be a selling point on here. I think it ends up being a selling point for a lot of people that don't know exactly what they're getting themselves in here. They see you know, 26,800 games and they think, wow, this is a massive setup. And it is, but it's massive because they're adding so many duplicates of the same titles. So let's um, let's back out of here. So if we back out with uh, should be this button right here. There we go. We get to our master list again, and let me open up that menu. And we have 3D games, we have fighting games. So you can go in here and you can search for three player or four player games, fighting games, action games, shooting games, sports games, uh, puzzle games. Let's go over here though to 3D games. Let's see what is in there. So what I would like in a perfect world is to be able to go uh, collection by collection because as of right now, I don't really know what's in here aside from uh, it seems like arcade games, obviously. We saw a lot of arcade games, but I don't know what's in here in terms of like home console games because there's just no way to know what versions they are, uh, what the titles are until you actually jump in. But let's go into 3D games and see what we have in here. So we've got Tekken 1, 2, and 3. That makes me think this is probably PlayStation. Um, and that looks to be on point with PlayStation. All these titles were available on PlayStation, so that makes sense for 3D titles. Um, and how many were on here? Let me go the opposite way so we get the game count populating in. So it looks like we have 56 titles in here. and. They, I mean, they're they're good titles, but I see Tekken 3 is already over here on number 31. Let's just see for fun how many Tekken 3s are in here. So we're at one Tekken 3 so far. So two Tekken 3s in here in total. So again, there's duplicates even in this collection, but let's check out Tekken 3. Let's see what the experience is like, because I love this game. It's one of my all-time favorites. The buttons on here uh, do seem quite responsive. There's good action on here. The layout of the six button configuration is very nice on the control deck. And uh, excuse me, joysticks seem to be very responsive as well, high quality. Um, they don't seem to unthread either, which is nice. Sometimes when you're playing with these, um, these types of joysticks, they'll start to actually rotate out and you'll end up with um, you know, the ball just in your hand because it unthreads itself. So it doesn't seem to be the case here from what I'm able to tell so far. All right, so yeah, definitely the PlayStation version here. And uh, I'm not seeing any noticeable lag. It seems very responsive. Now, I don't know what the controls are going to be because this is a PlayStation game and we're playing this on, you know, any, any arcade stick, but we're going to bear with me here. All right, so that button is kick, that button's punch. Cool. Very responsive. I mean, it, it feels really good. There's no lag or delays. It's very smooth gameplay. Uh, I just gotta get used to the, just gotta get used to the controls here, but it does feel quite good. All right, cool. Let's uh, see these buttons don't care if they do anything. So there's dual functions to a lot of these buttons, just because we have more buttons than we would actually need for this title. But again, it does feel quite good. I'm not sure what combination grapples. Oh, uh, it looks like that one, okay. All right, so it's definitely gotta get used to it, but the game performs very well. There's no lags or delays. It's smooth sailing here. So how do we get out? Um, that's a good question. How do we exit games out here? So see reset is that. Hmm. Oh, okay, so if we hit the start button and the other players, um, 
pause or play button, it opens up this menu and we can go ahead and hit exit right here. So, all right, easy enough to figure out how to navigate. Um, so this was probably the most demanding game to actually jump into here, or this collection is at least the most demanding games. Let's go into, um, let's back out, let's try something else here. So let's search for, I do like the search function on here. Let's look for, let's see what comes up for Mario. It is a little funky to navigate like the tight letters here. Um, you'll see that it does jump around like pretty easily. It takes a little getting used to like that one I overshot the I so we went straight to O and then like to navigate these little areas. Um, is there a regular, yeah I hit the wrong button there. Like I'm constantly over correcting or like going past the letters that I want so it's a little awkward to yeah see like I'm trying to hit the A and I hit the Z now I have to go all the way over here backspace definitely a little awkward same thing it's like you have to just tap it ever so slightly to get what you want out of it okay so we've got Mario let's see what we have so we've got Super Mario Brothers so there's NES on here uh, I don't believe that's the arcade version of this. Uh, I got some old school Mario here versus Dr. Mario, Super Mario World, Super Mario Brothers again. Uh, and there are different versions, so I'm not broken up about the duplicates here so much, but how many pages of Mario titles? So according to this, 221, that does seem to be accurate, but not all of these are like, oh, Jackie Chan Mario edition, okay, cool. Blue Mario Brothers. So there are some hacks in here too, which is cool to see. I do like the, the search function at least. It, it makes it a little bit easier to navigate. But still, I mean, you could struggle finding what you're looking for just because I like to have the, um, you know, the list there that populates in an alphabetical order. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's really not that bad. Um, Jackie Chan Mario Edition is actually pretty cool. I have played that before. Let me search for one more thing here. I wanna see if Michael Jackson's Moonwalker is on here. Love that game. And I'm not sure if it would be under Michael or Moonwalker. I guess we could just try, see what I mean? Like I'm constantly going past the M. There we go, it's right there, Moonwalker. Um, so let me hit OK, and I'm not sure which version. Oh, sweet, it's the arcade version. That's the version I like most. And what's the other one down here? Yeah, all right, sweet. So there are duplicates again. There's duplicates all over our screen. But let's jump in here and see how this game performs.
All right, guys, so the Pandora Box arcade console. We unboxed this, we toured through what it offers, and we demoed a couple games on here. And I have to say, it's relatively a good experience here. And I'm not a big fan of Pandora Box, but I'm gonna to explain to you guys why. So let's address the elephant in the room first and foremost. The game count on here, it's complete and utter BS. They're using their game count as they always do as a marketing strategy or a marketing tool to kind of set them apart from the competition out there. They're trying to pad their numbers to get a really high game count. So they're advertising 26,800 games. It's complete crap because that's not true to what they're offering here. They're offering that many ROMs, but how many times over are they providing you with the same ROMs? Multiple times. And we saw that when we used the search function because as you type in specific titles in the search, they're gonna populate in there in order more or less. So we typed in WWF just to see what the offering is for WWF games. And we counted out how many times WrestleFest was in here. It was in here six different times. It's not different versions, it's not you know sequels, it's the same game six times over. So right there you get one game, but they get to count it six different times. That's complete trash in my opinion. You know They're just trying to pad the numbers because they're banking on getting people you know, through an Amazon listing or through a listing online that is just coming in here uninformed and comparing value based on what is being provided to them. They're looking at, okay, this is selling for $129.99. It's offering us 26,800 uh, games. They're going over to the next one. Okay, it's coming at us at $119 or $110, but we're only getting 12,000 games. Okay, this is the better value over here, but it's not because it doesn't offer truly 26,800 games. It offers a fraction of that. I don't know what the true count is. Nobody, I don't even think they know what the true count is because nobody's gonna comb through this and figure that out. But you gotta figure, all right, there's probably an average of four to five duplicates for every single title on here. It is that extreme. I went through this pretty in depth and there are duplicates for everything. It's not a matter of are there duplicates for the titles. It's a matter of how many duplicates are there. So averaging about four to five uh, duplicates per title. So in theory, you could take that 26,800 and divide it by five or divide it by four to be conservative. And that's probably closer to your true game count on here. So it's a shady tactic. I'm not for that at all, because if you threw that aside, what we have here is actually a pretty decent product. It is well-made. Uh, it's high quality, you know, especially when considering the price point here, which is not out outrageous for $129 and change. Uh, even when considering tax, I think this is definitely worth that. You get a lot of games, even you know duplicates aside. There's still a good amount of games provided here, mostly classic arcade and you know Capcom style games, beat 'em up style games. But that's what you'd want to play with this arcade style setup. So the buttons are very responsive. They're not super high quality. They're cheap plastic at the end of the day. But the lighting on here is nice. I like the way that it alternates colors. The design is very unique. I like the plexiglass on top. So, you know, it gives you a little bit of protection and durability to your experience. The joysticks are very on point. The only thing I struggled with was navigating through the search because the letters are so close together. Sometimes you jump over a letter that you're looking for. Like when I was trying to type in Mario, I kept messing up because I was tapping this and instead of going over one letter, it was going over two or three, but you get used to it and you just kind of tap it gently like that and you can get where you need to go. At the end of the day, they didn't design joysticks to, you know, spell out words. They're intended to be used for playing games, and they do very well with that. So uh, I do like the offerings here. I like the fact that we have the VGA back there so we can use this setup with older monitors uh, or older arcade monitors. We also have the HDMI, which is what I use today, so we can get our video and audio over to modern day TVs and monitors too. So you have the best of both worlds there. We have the settings button over here on the back side. You can get the audio through here, or you can get it over through HDMI to your TV or monitor. It just depends on what setup and what you want to use this with. We have the additional USB ports, so you can bring in external controllers into the mix and get up to four players going for the games that allow that. Uh, so I, I really do like what this offers. I just don't like the way that they've laid out games. I don't like that it's not in alphabetical order. It makes it awkward to actually find what you're looking for or to explore things, because for me, one of the coolest features of something like this is being able to explore games and to do so in an effective and efficient way. And with it just being a random assortment of games thrown at you, and the reason they're doing that is to cover up their tracks with the duplicates, and I'll explain why in a minute, but um, that's the downside here. If I know exactly what I'm looking for, I can use the search function, but if I'm trying to explore things, 
um, you know, I, I like to be able to go through the game list and it not just be totally random. I also am not crazy about the fact that their collections aren't very thorough. Like 3D games is PlayStation, but um, you know, it's it's not well detailed. Like I know what it is because I'm familiar with these sort of setups, but the average person probably isn't looking at 3D games and knowing, okay, that's PlayStation right off the bat. Uh, and then going through like the categories like sports games, you're getting a mix of games for a bunch of different collections. I'd like to see it laid out like console by console, or even if you did it like developers like Midway Games over here, Atari over here, stuff like that. I think there's just a more efficient way to laying everything out for the user to have a, a more seamless experience with. But the reason that they're not doing alphabetical order is because if they did that, you would find out very quickly how many duplicates there are. Let's take you know, WrestleFest as our example again, because we searched that and saw it firsthand. If you type in WWF, which we did, but if you typed in WWF WrestleFest, you went the full length, you would see all those titles back to back. You would have your whole list of six in a row. If you typed in Mario, um, uh, Super Mario Brothers, you would get all the Super Marios in a row. You would get Super Mario uh, Brothers. You'd get Super Mario Brothers 2 all in a row, and you'd be able to count there one after the other, how many times they're in there multiple times in a row. If you don't use alphabetical order, then it would be just thrown in there at random. So you wouldn't get those duplicates side by side. So the person you know, going through everything, me in this case, wouldn't see that unless they really searched for it and you know, knew what to look for. So there's some shadiness going on here, but at the end of the day, the product is still good. I do see value in it, especially at that price point. So I, I just wish that they would go through this a little bit closer and put a little bit more attention into what they're providing and how they're providing it. You know, stop lying about the true game count here because there's value here in what they are actually offering. You don't have to lie to consumers and mislead them with game counts to make your product attractive. You can just highlight what it actually offers because what it offers is actually good in this case. It's very well put together and it, it was fun to use and the gameplays were smooth. There was no lags or delays. There was no audio cutouts or issues. What they're using internally is capable of emulating what they're providing to you in terms of games. So it is a good experience in the end, and I, I would recommend it if it lines up with what you're looking for and the experience that you want here with the you know, player one and player two arcade controls and then the capabilities of bringing in external controllers. So let me know what you guys think in the comments of this video about what is being offered here, and also let me know what you guys think about the approach to what is being offered here. That's gonna do it for today though. I'll provide a link to this so you can get some additional information up here at the top of your screen as well as in the description of the video. You guys know the deal though, if you enjoyed the content, please give me a thumbs up right here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. And of course, click subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.